Hey everyone, Mr. Bells here. Um, this is going to be a data B video. Uh, it's going to be used for both concepts class and the regular class. Uh, but it's about an introduction to matrices. I'm going to leave a sheet. Uh, some of you might have gotten a sheet if you're looking at these years in the future. <laughs> I don't know. This is 2022 data B introduction to matrices. Okay, so first off, a matrix is simply a series in, of rows and columns of numbers. So let's say I had this 3, 4, 1, 2, 0, negative 6, 5, negative 3. Uh, so this is considered a matrix. It stores information. And right here, you can see this is going across. This is row 1. This is row 2. And column 1 column two, column three, I'm just not going to write them all out, column four. Uh, so uh, in terms of how to describe it, it has something called a dimension, and its dimensions are rows by columns. So this one happens to be a matrix that is two by four. Also, if we call this matrix A, uh, then if I said A, uh, two comma three, that would refer to in matrix A, row 2, column 3, and that would be that number right there. That would be a 5 in that number. Okay? So, and that's called a cell location, uh, A23. So, what are some of the things that we can do with these things? We can add matrices, subtract matrices, do something called scalar multiplication, and something called regular multiplication. Um, there also will be some things called inverses, and it's kind of like a division thing, but it's kind of special cases. So here we go. First off, addition and subtraction. The only way that you can add and subtract matrices, so again, you can only add or subtract uh, when they are the same dimension. So if I had a 3, negative 2, 4, 1, like this, we'll call this one A. B is A. 6, negative 2, 1, 3, 5, uh, 0. You can have 0 in here. Uh, at this point in time, if I said what is A plus B equal to, be like, well, A is a 2 by 2 and B is a 2 by 3. Um, since they have to have the same dimension, this would be no solution. You can't add these two matrices together, so they have to have the exact same dimensions. So if I did a third uh, matrix up here, C, called this negative 2, 7, 4, 1. Put them in there just like that. Uh, and I said, okay, how about this? How about A plus C? Well, A plus C I could do because that's a 2 by 2, and that's a 2 by 2, okay? And again, take notes as you go down through this. Don't just kind of nod your head. Um, make sure you're writing things down because there's going to be quite a bit to it. So what does A plus C actually equal? Well, we simply have to add the two things that are in the same cell location. So R1C1 here with R1C1 here. 3 plus negative 2 is 1. Negative 2 plus 7 is 5, 4 plus 4 is 8, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Now if that works for addition, it also works for subtraction. Um, so you just have to subtract each of those terms. So if I did this, I did a minus c, I said what does that equal? We know that we can do it again because it's a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2. And of course the answer is going to be a 2 by 2. So 3 minus negative 2, that's 5. Negative 2 minus 7, that's negative 9. 4 minus 4 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is also 0. So A minus C, 5, negative 9, 0, 0, is, uh, is the 2 by 2 matrix that results from that subtraction. Okay. We can also do something called scalar. Let me move that up a little bit. 
scalar multiplication, scalar multiplication. And that's a pretty basic thing, because it scales the entire matrix. And scalar multiplication doesn't require anything. If I put a 3 outside of a 4, 2, 1, 6, and I multiply these two things together, uh, that would equal a 12, 6, 3, uh, 18. 3 times 4, 12. 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 1, 3. 3 times 6, 18. Likewise, if I did this as, say, uh, 4B right up here, and B was this one right up here, like we had before, 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 4 times 1 is 4. 12, 20, and 0. So it basically just takes anything and multiplies the entire stuff to it. Okay? Um, and we're going to talk later on about how addition of matrices uh, gets affected in video games. Uh, scalar multiplication, how you can do that with businesses, um, geometric transformations, uh, all kinds of different things. But what I'm going to get to now, because this is the hardest part of it, I'm going to do some uh, regular multiplication. And that's the one that's going to take some time. So please stay nice and uh, slow with the video notes on this. So this is matrix multiplication. Now, I'm going to go over it again in class. Uh, but <coughs> you really want to have a heads up on this stuff. And I want you to be able to complete the worksheet that I left here too for you. So in this matrix multiplication, uh, the first thing I have to decide is uh, I have some matrices here. So I'm going to let A equal, I'm going to bring up some brand new stuff. So 3, negative 6, 4, negative 2. And B, uh, which is 2, 1, 7, uh, negative 3, negative 4, 0. And C, uh, which is going to be a 1, 3, 2, 6, 4, negative 1, like that. Okay, so matrix multiplication is really kind of, it's kind of weird, interesting, you might say. Uh, my, my lights just went off, so I'll be right back. Again, you don't have enough movement in the classroom, and uh, the lights go off. Matrix multiplication, the first thing you have to do is you have to write down the dimensions of each one of the matrices. And when you multiply a matrix, there's a difference between AB and BA. When you do AB, you're doing a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 3. When you're doing BA, you have a 2 by 3, which is B's dimension, times a 2 by 2. And that's really important. Now the reason is, in order for you to be, even be able to do these multiplications, you first off, again, have to write the dimensions down next to each other like that. Whichever letter comes first, their dimension comes first. Letter comes second, dimension comes second. Then we have to look at the inside numbers. The inside numbers. If those numbers are not the same, you can't do it. So 2 by 2, this one is possible. And this one, a 3 by 2, this one's not possible. So I can't even write it down, can't do anything about it, not possible, no solution, and I'm done. Okay, so I'm going to try and do A times B, and I'm going to write it down here uh, below. So again, I'm just going to copy it down so you guys can see it. So I'm going to put them right next to each other. A 3, 4, negative 6, negative 2, and a 2, 1, 7, negative 3, negative 4, 0. And again, I have to put them down in that order. I have to put A, then B. Well, the next thing that we have to figure out is this. If we know that it's possible, which in this case these two letters our two numbers together are the same, have to be the same, make it possible. The end result is the dimensions of the outside numbers. 
So I know that this is going to end up being a 2 by 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split this up just like this to let you know that my answer has to be, again, the outside two numbers. So inside two numbers have to match. Outside two numbers is the result of your answer. Okay? Next, I'm going to go with some colored pens here. And if I do this once really slow, I hope this will help for you. So the first thing I'm going to ask is what is in this red cell location right here? Well, this is row 1, column 1. So that means I'm going to take the numbers in row 1 of the first matrix and the numbers in column 1 of the second matrix, and I'm going to use their uh, connections to put what's in that cell location. And I do the first thing here times the first thing there. So I do 3 times 2, and I do plus, and I do negative 6 times negative 3. Okay, so 3 times 2 plus negative 6 times negative 3. So I got 6 plus positive 18. So 6 plus 18 equals 24. And that is what has to go in that cell location. So again, to keep the color straight, this cell location is row 1, right? Column 2. So I'm going to go row 1, column 2. And again, first thing times first thing, 3 times 1, plus second thing times second thing, negative 6 times negative 4. So 3 plus 24 is 27. So next one that I'm going to ask you to do is this one. And I want you to stop the video and try it on your own right now before I, before I go ahead and do it. Okay, so stop the video. Think about what it's going to be and then put that in that cell location. Okay, so if you're back now, that's awesome. Hopefully you actually did stop the video. You're not just uh, playing it. So this cell location is R1C3. So that's row 1 in blue now with column 3. 3 times 7 is 21, negative 6 times 0 is 0, so I get a 21 from the 3 times the 7, plus the negative 6 times the 0, negative 6 times 0 is 0, so 21 plus 0, and that's 21. Okay? So now, if you could, please stop the video again, if hopefully you got 21 right, and see if you can get those three answers. Because this one is row 2, column 1. This one is row 2, column 2. This one is row 2, column 3. Give it a shot. See how it works. Awesome. Hopefully you're back now. So you're going to take row 2, column 1. So 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. 8 and 6 is 14. Now you're going to take green with green. 4 times 1 is 4. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. 4 and 8 is 12. And I take the blues. 4 times 7 is 28. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. And you get 28. So 14, 12, 28. Interesting that this one had 50% of the numbers negative. This one had 33% uh, of the numbers negative. But the results were there were no negatives at all in this and this ended up product. Okay, so that's how you do matrix multiplication. And it works the same if you get bigger numbers. And I have separate videos up on, the, uh, on my website um, uh, attached to Mr. Bell's Weebly. Mr. Bell's. Or maybe it's Mr. Bell's. Weebly. Whatever. You type that in, it'll come up. It's been up there for 20 years now and uh, got a lot of stuff on it can help you out with some of it. Okay, so how does this help you do this worksheet? And again, don't start doing this until you know what the heck's going on. So I'm going to kind of talk through this little thing to help you out with it. So first, I'll kind of explain some things. So uh, I know it says quiz number one. You could ignore that. It's, it's not a quiz. 
Um, but I have two stores, store A and store B, that has some sweatshirts in them. And they have small sweatshirts, medium sweatshirts, and large sweatshirts. So when I read this thing, this says store A has 32 medium sweatshirts. Store B has 28 medium sweatshirts. Store B has 36 large sweatshirts. Store A has 28 large sweatshirts. Now, if I look even in more detail, it says this is in January. So this is the amount of inventory, and that means the stuff that they have in their actual store. The same two stores then received new inventory on February 1st. So they got a shipment in of small, medium, and large sweatshirts. The table shows the inventory at the stores. We will call this matrix N. So in this case, store A received 12 new small shirt sweatshirts, 14 new medium sweatshirts, and 11 new large sweatshirts. And again, we're trying to keep this as simple as possible. I don't want to give you a, like a 70 by 180 matrix on the first thing, <laughs> some basic ones. Uh, store B would have uh, 20 new small ones, 16 new medium ones, and 12 new large ones. So the same two stores sold inventory throughout February of small, medium, and large sweatshirts. The table shows the sweatshirts sold at the store. So this is sweatshirt sold during the month of February. Okay, so store A sold 18 small sweatshirts, 11 medium sweatshirts, and 13 large sweatshirts. Store B sold 24 small sweatshirts, 22 medium sweatshirts, and 9 large sweatshirts. So I'm hoping this makes sense to you, okay? Uh, it says uh, matrix, we call this matrix J. And this matrix was matrix N, it says it right there, and this matrix is matrix S. Okay, so I'm hoping this is logical for you, that this matrix plus this matrix would be how many sweatshirts they have con total in their stores, because this is what they had at the uh, inventory in January. This is what they got February 1st when they got their new shipment in. So 46 plus 12 would be 58 small sweatshirts in store A. 18 and 20 would be 38 small sweatshirts in store B. Okay? Then this matrix, because this is what they sold during the month of February, these would all be taken away from those ones. So uh, it asks a few questions. What's the dimension? Well, we've already talked about dimensions. You should be able to answer that. What specifically does the number mean in cell N2, comma 1? Well, that means N, row 2, nope, row 2, that's store B, column 1. So what exactly does that mean? And don't just put down the number 20. I know it's the number 20. What does that mean specifically for this? Okay, if you're still watching the video, which you should be, it means that store B got 20 new small sweatshirts shipped to them on February 1st. And that would be, ended up being added to their uh, leftover inventory from January. So then it talks about other questions down the line. And it says in the space below, fill out J plus N matrix. Would, uh, what, a J put, what a J plus N matrix would look like, include numerical data and all relevant labels as were used above. So again, it's looking up at here, so you're going to make a matrix that looks just like this, and what J plus N actually is, okay? So I will tell you at least this, this 46 and this 12 would be 58, and that 58 would go right there. Fill in the rest of the stuff for what it means for each one of those things for J plus N. Okay, we flip it over here. This says a movie theater marks up ticket prices by 50%. Well, these are all the prices for the children based on a matinee evening and late night, and for an adult based on a matinee evening and late night shows. If it was marked up by 50%, that would mean a scalar multiplication, right? Whatever this matrix is, if this is A, I would do 1.5 times A, because 50% is 0.5, the one represents the original cost. So one plus a markup of 50%, 1.5 A. And then all of those prices would go in there. Next, I've got some matrices A and B. We wanna see if we can add them. B and C, can we add them? B minus D, can we subtract them? And then down here, can I do three times C? What does that mean? Can I do half B? What does that mean? Can I do A times B? 
and can I do B times C? Okay, just so that we have a, a little bit more practice on this, I'm going to go ahead and put a D on here, and D is going to be a 1, 0, 3, negative 4, and a 2, 5, 1, 7. So the other thing that I would like you to be able to do is go ahead and do a AD. So my third matrix here is going to be AD, and what does that equal? Okay, then I have a bonus question. It says create two or more matrices that you can add together to create a matrix that stores a special code using A equals 1, B equals 2, etc. I'm going to say for right now, we're not going to do that. I'm going to have to explain that in a lot more detail in class. Okay, so again, hopefully this is all good for you. You saw this, and that you will be wonderfully successful. Again, if this is March in 2022 when you're watching this, I'm going to see you tomorrow uh, in school, and we'll uh, finalize the rest of this stuff, review over some net substitution, elimination, and Kramer's rule, all those kind of things. If it's later on in the future, um, I hope this was a beneficial thing and you were able to at least look at a, one of the practice problems I had, stop the video, slow it down, and go from there to answer any of those questions. I'll talk to you later. Mr. Bess, out.